last of the workflows that we're going to go through and is what I refer to as a direct to try in workflow and reflecting on the other three workflows first. And if we look at the other three workflows, each of them provided the designed technician with information, didn't it? The wax rim or the dentures, patients existing dentures, or you know, pre-extracted teeth. Those all served as a reference for the design technician to refer to in the process of setting the teeth. Whereas the direct to try in is where the patient doesn't have a denture and we're starting from scratch. And probably the um, least desirable in some sense because it's harder to start from scratch. It'd be much easier to start from a um, uh, any one of those other particular workflows, especially the impressions and the denture workflows we had mentioned. So let's start from scratch. So we take preliminary impressions or impressions. I won't call them preliminary. It depends what you want to call them. They're impressions. And, uh, and they're done traditionally. And the only thing we're going to add on here is because we have to, um, we have to have a relationship between the upper and lower jaw. So we use what we refer to as a centric tray, which is kind of a little scaffold device. And basically it helps us do a glorified mush bite so that we have at least a relationship between the upper and lower jaw. The UTS CAD it's not a face bowl, but it is a device that does attach to the centric tray. It will give us some patient data, in particular the patient's bipupillary plane. So that's the primary purpose of that. But again, we don't have wax rooms, we don't have denture teeth, we don't have things to go by, so having the little bit more information here is, is kind of important. We scan it, this gets popped up as a virtual mounting, we could then use whatever information, in particular the UTS CAD and the centric tray here, uh, will help us, um, the design technician, to set a an occlusal plane from which then we'll guide the position of rims or not. Or, in other words, why do a rim? And initially we did rims. Now, the... Um, we do have another workflow, which I don't even bring into this conversation, where we do design rims, specialized rims, to do a gothic arch tracing. And that's our nathometer uh, CAD. Uh, that's kind of a different story all in itself, so I, I didn't include that. But typically, there's really no reason to fabricate rims, because we get, we get all this information. Let's set teeth. Let's set teeth. So we go direct to try in, and that's why we refer to this workflow as a direct to try in technique. So we're bypassing the traditional rims and basically making a try in denture. And this try in denture will, could be kind of used as trays for taking impressions or not, depending on the quality of the impressions that were first taken. So we'll get into a little bit more detail on that. Dr. Lasello had a couple questions come in on this on this slide. Um, uh, what material do you use for the centric tray is question one. And from another um, doctor, uh, with the four techniques, how do you establish the VDO? Uh, yeah, I'm going to actually I'm going to answer both of those in the next in the upcoming slides. Good Very question. Well. Very good. Well. And, I, and it's uh, good that I anticipated them, I guess, as being questions. Um, but the, so, so the directed try-in, um, what we're trying in here, by, by the way, what you're looking at here on this try-in denture is a monolithic uh, printed or milled base. The pink you're looking at is just some wax that's added or um, could be a, a triad material, something that's pink that just gives a distinction between the tooth color and the gingival colors, just to give you a little, but, but it's kind of monochromatic, uh, but it's the teeth. That's the teeth that you chose and selected, as opposed to looking at a amorphous rim. So the, the try-in of the rim, as opposed to the try-in of these try-in dentures, that's what, they're worlds apart. There's no reason to go to um, uh, resort to rims. So again, we could make better aesthetic uh, interpretation and decisions with the teeth uh, in tooth forms as opposed to the rims. So rims are gone. I mean, I don't, other than doing the traditional wax rim stage, 
you know, or workflow like we showed, showed originally, but if it fires on the digital process, starting from scratch, I unless you're going to do specialized rims for Gothic arch tracing, which is a you know, academically interesting, but not, not a real practical procedure, uh, we pretty much ignore the rim stage. So let's go back to the impressions and et cetera. Impressions are your interpretation. And we could be algin impressions. We could do uh, putty impressions to start with, or and then you could refine the putty impressions by taking a wash impression, kind of like the massage impression technique. In other words, your goal could be to to make these turn these into final impressions. Your call, or you could do trio central oral scanning. Is your um, uh, if, instead of impressions, we do a scan. So, so this is up to the decision of the clinician and how he wants to start the process and, uh, of impressions and what you want to call it, preliminary or final impressions. So it depends on your technique. This is the centric tray. It's basically a um, scaffold that uh, has a little tongue guard there with those little projections. Uh, I'm not sure if you can see my mouse. I won't. I don't know if you can see that or not, but these these are little tongue guides that kind of help keep the tongue at bay while you're doing the process of doing a jaw record. Uh, the material that I like to use here is, again, the putty material. That's the impression putty. Uh, I like to use the regular set. It's got a fast set, but it's too fast for me. And uh, But I'm trying to do this this bite registration. I want a little play. I like to have a little extra time as I'm doing this particular process. And... Um, we load the tray with uh, this putty. Once you incorporate the putty, it's because it's uh, um, uh, two parts, and you mix it together like putties. And you load the tray, we insert it in the patient's mouth, and once inserted, take your time and have the patient closed. I, I shortchanged myself on a few slides. Um, I do want to mention that at the end of the program, I'm going to mention that we have a instruction for use electronic copy that um, uh, BJ will make available, probably send it in a PDF format to everybody who's um, present. And that will have a lot more detailed information on how to do the uh, central tray record. Uh, and so, so we could, so I, you know, in one hour, I didn't want to labor too much time towards it, but uh, it's basically a mush bite. You could do a pre-assessment of vertical dimension, and this the uh, IFU will give you all that little extra information on how to achieve that. So I apologize for not having you know all that detail in here, but I hope that it's enough to answer the question at this particular point. Uh, it's a putty impression material. It's we have the patient closed to a vertical that we've pre-assessed. And uh, again, I kind of referred to the uh, IFU to give you a little more information on that. The uh, UTS CAD, again, it looks like a face bowl, but it's not a face bowl. And it, it attaches to the uh, centric tray. And this is, this is applied back into the patient's mouth. And it's adjustable. And we adjust it and we look at the registration in particular. This is the bipupillary registration. And we adjust it until we the bow of the um, UTS CAD is parallel to the patient's eyes. And then we write down the number that exists. In this case, it's a plus one or, or so. And we jot it down. Then we look at the patient sagittally and again adjust the bow. And we write down the number that will give us the posterior aspect of the occlusal plane. And we refer to this as camper's plane. So we got the bipupillary and camper's plane uh, registered. The reason it's CE and not CP is um, because this is a global instrument. And um, the Europeans in particular are more, a, there's a German word for plane that referred to as even. So it's um, it's why it comes out to CE, just because I always get asked that question. But regardless, it's just an abbreviation. So we record these numbers, and this is what's delivered to the laboratory, not the bowl. We, we don't lock this in or do send anything to the laboratory other than the, the, um, the, the bits of information that we recorded here. 